after uh, it um, let me start over hi i'm mita mastani and we are here as a cd we are here as a, to discuss and to understand more about ipr in the craft sector to understand who has an ownership who for traditional designs for contemporary designs for people who work in the craft sector we are here with a panel with very wide interests and also with a panel with wide ranging beliefs from ranging from copy left to people who are reluctant kind of followers of ipr and people who are enthusiastic followers of ipr so there's the whole spectrum of people and uh, i would like to ask everybody on the panel to introduce themselves a short introduction hindi english kisi mein bhi introduce kijiye jisme bhi aap comfortable hain and we have people who are here who will we can speak in both the languages i think everybody sort of understands both languages uh, rohan rohit ki is an ipr lawyer who's here as part of the panel and who's going to be telling us more of the details the rest of us are all people who have been working in the craft sector for a long time and who have different questions on this issue um i would like to start with maybe rajesh could you introduce yourself and tell us a little of how you you are connected with what is your interest in this topic and what kind of work do you do yes uh, my name is rajesh uh, mera naam rajesh kulkarni hai aur main potter hu aur uh, terracotta pottery mein uh, last 25 30 years, uh, years i am working with और जो मीडियम मैं यूज करता हूँ इस्तेमाल करता हूँ वो इट्स अ ट्रेडिशनल मीडियम तो बहुत सारे लोग मुझे पूछते हैं कि आपने ये पॉटरी कितने साल से शुरुआत की है तो मैं बोलता हूँ लगभग ट्वेंटी फाइव थर्टी ईयर्स देन आई आज दे मै क्वेश्चन कि आप कितने सालों से हम लोग पॉटरी कर रहे हैं हम लोग कितने सालों से पॉटरी कर, कर रहे हैं सो दे गेट स्टम्बल्ड अपॉन और उसका आंसर मैं ही दे देता हूँ कि 14,000 इयर्स से हम लोग पॉटरी कर रहे हैं तो ये जो क्राफ्ट uh, या फिर जो मीडियम मैं इस्तेमाल कर रहा हूँ इट्स अ वेरी ओल्ड मीडियम इट इज कॉल्ड अ फर्स्ट मैनमेड ऑब्जेक्ट और वो लेगसी जो है वो आज कॉन्टेम्पररी पॉटरी के uh, तरीके से मैं इस्तेमाल कर रहा हूँ और ट्रेडिशनल uh, पॉटरी की जो प्रैक्टिस है जो व्हील थ्रोन पॉटरी या हैंडमेड पॉटरी या फिर फंक्शनल वेयर से लेके एस्थेटिक्स तक वो ऐसी पूरी रेंज है और टेराकोटा पॉटरी में जो हम लोगों ने एक्सपेरिमेंट्स किए हैं और जो मटेरियल हैंडल किया है धीरे धीरे करके वो एक रिफाइंड पॉटरी करके उभर आई है वी वेर नॉट नोइंग एक्चुअली सो पीपल आर स्टार्टेड कॉलिंग दिस बेंचमार्क टेराकोटा पॉटरी सो वो हमें पता भी नहीं था लेकिन वो धीरे धीरे बन गया और मैं ऑर्गेनाइजेशन नेम इट्स अ प्रोपराइटरी यूनिट और उसका जो नाम है वो आकार है आकार इज अ शेप आकार पॉट आर्ट और uh, आसपास के परिसर के uh, जो टैलेंट्स है वो यहाँ आके सीखते हैं और हमारे साथ में जुड़ जाते हैं वो यहाँ काम करते हैं या फिर अपना पॉटरी स्टूडियो भी uh, शुरुआत कर, चालू करके वो uh, अपना खुद का एंटिटी बनवा लेते हैं सो so, uh, they are also uh, in in a way kind of part of akar's movement aur usko hum is tarah se dekhte hain but uh, yes uh, there are <laughs> many dimensions to uh, related to this uh, 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 this journey ek jo hai wo personal hai dusra jo hai wo ideology ki hai aur teesra jo hai wo material ka jo behavior hai uske bare mein hum log baad mein baat kar sakte hain so i am a basically i am a potter thank you lovely thank you for that okay next shiva would you like to tell us a little more about yourself and your interest in this topic as well yeah thanks thanks mita um good afternoon everyone uh, i am shiva devi reddy uh, founder of gocop uh, gocop is a platform for uh, Uh, indian weavers and artisans uh, we basically connect our artisan community with uh, national as well as global markets uh, we started off in the year 2012 uh, as an online platform 
uh, but then we also connect uh, uh, artisan community to basically the cooperatives, the uh, groups of artisans that we work with, craft entrepreneurs we work with. Uh, we also connect them with offline markets through our uh, offline events. And also we connect them with uh, retailers, uh, with buyers uh, through our B2B services. Uh, so we are overall a platform which connects the uh, craft communities both with uh, markets in India as well as outside India. Uh, my background, uh, I'm more a technologist. I started my career in the Bay Area back in year 2000. Um, I started working at HP Research Labs and then worked with Accenture for almost 10 years before I started this venture. Um, the, the whole motivation for me to do something like this was, uh, you know, I see that technology, we use it, uh, we have used it and I personally have used it to, to a great extent to make uh, larger organizations more successful. But uh, but I think yeah, technology can play a, a a big role. Not only I always believe that technology can play a big role not only for large organizations but also for the smaller, you know, disconnected uh, you know communities like the uh, the arts and craft community that we have in India. Um, I think uh, in my experience over the last ten years, what we have seen is uh, the artisan community has been. Um, uh, in many ways, disenfranchised from markets, uh, has been uh, left out from a lot of development which happens around them. You know, what kind of development that we see in India today. And more so in the last few years, uh, I would say that, you know, they are also being robbed, you know, for the for the very basis of their existence, right? Which is the, the craft technique that they, they have learned through the generations that they actually truly own. I think now uh, time has come where big corporates are even robbing them of the craft that they actually, you know, are, are rightful owners of. Um, and this is not just big corporates. <clears throat> I think consciously, unconsciously, maybe all of us are doing this, where uh, today there is so much of craft washing, green washing, every washing which happens, right? Today, I, I don't know if that's the right word. Mm -hmm. I think we have to wait for our lawyers to, you know, help us on this. But, uh, but, you know, there's so much of misrepresentation of craft which happens. I can tell you that it's not funny anymore. You know, every big brand that I know, every, uh, and then so many people on social media everywhere, right? Uh, finally, you know, the, you look, the community itself is at, at, you know, struggling for survival and has been at receiving end for a long time with all the industrialization which happened and everything else. And now to add to the complexity or to compound the problem further, now we are just taking away that craft also, right, from the, the communities which actually own this craft. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would like to discuss and see, you know, how we can make a change, right? I mean, where can we start and, you know, how we can make some change in, in the way this is being done today. Thank you. Absolutely. I think that's really true what you're saying. And um, also it's not really a sector because there may be a separate retail sector, but the actual crafts people, the artisans, the people working with them, it's only now that it's coming together as a sector. I think post-COVID, those two years, everybody had a little time. We all spoke. Uh, there were several organizations like Loose Volunteer or otherwise organizations like Creative Dignity, which have come together. And we've started, we are even starting to look at it as a sector. So I think this is a really important step in making a community which is connected with the artisan sector, but is larger and brings in more people into the same community. Okay, Sudakshina, so what about you? Hi, uh, I'm Sudakshina, of course, one of the members of uh, Creative Dignity from the absolutely initial stages. And as Meeta, you just, you know, uh, said, in the right spirit that you know it's currently i think with all these you know very loosely all of us are connected together and maybe a sector will emerge and you know with help from people like rohan and you know give us give us a solid entity on its own so which of course all of us feel that uh, it's not there today um so i belong to a small again a very small organization called studio copper based in pune and uh, we work mostly with metal artisans. And um, uh, our whole idea was to revive heritage crafts through uh, 
you know, like crafts, like I'll, I'll just put in our first core group was something in Pune city itself, which was Tambar Delhi and uh, where we were seeing the next generation of artisans were not coming into the fort. So, uh, so Studio Copper started in uh, 2012. Uh, more in a in a like a you know we were all like very interested parties 2014 finally we made studio copper as an entity but uh, from 2012 we've been trying to uh, with the help of intact etc we've been trying to uh, get them together and create products and we would be doing the marketing and the uh, uh, the marketing and of course the design intervention so uh, as a core philosophy of our company, design is very, very core to us. And uh, so thereby uh, uh, a twofold situation arises that uh, one is that the designs that we make per se, how can they be protected? Uh, Rohan, these questions are for you because I'll uh, throw you some sample, some aspects of that and the second part is that even the artisans the work that they do for so long like as somebody said uh, I think uh, Rajesh said that you know it's 1500 1400 years so uh, if you see our artisans in these premises are there from the time of Shivaji Maharaj so <laughs> what are we talking of you know it's their heritage their lineage that we are talking of right and um, how can we protect misappropriation of their work versus you know the designers who work with them like uh, today uh, many of the times we see that you know our designs even if we do an IP and we do a uh, we have actually done a couple of them you know where we have the IP number etc uh, but uh, it doesn't work and uh, small enterprises really don't have the capacity to, uh, you know, go the legal way, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, it's, uh, I'll just show you a slide when we talk later. And uh, yeah, so we are in that stage and it would be great to hear from you, Rohan, on what thought processes of these cultural things that you're talking of. These are all soft skills. How can, you know, people not misappropriate or, uh, like you know, take their entire uh, like the larger corporations, etc., which is very easily done. But uh, how can we put a stop to that? So that's what we are here for, I guess. Yeah. Thank you, Sudakshana. Bridge Vellabh ji, you are here. Absolutely, I am. Ji. Namaste. Ji, namaste. आप हमको अपने बारे में थोड़ा कुछ बताइए आपके काम के बारे में थोड़ा शॉर्ट इंट्रोडक्शन और आपका इस टॉपिक के साथ क्या इंटरेस्ट है आ, नमस्ते मैं ब्रिज बल्लभ उदयवाल और मैं जयपुर से हूं जो कि राजस्थान में है और राजस्थान जो कि अपनी कलाओं के लिए पूरे विश्व में प्रसिद्ध है और जब हम आज बात कर रहे हैं तो मैं सिर्फ ब्रिज वल्लभ बनकर बात नहीं कर रहा हूं मैं सांगानेरी हैंड ब्लॉक प्रिंटिंग जो कि एक जीआई धारक आ, आ, क्लस्टर है जिसको कि 2010 में जीआई ग्रांट हुआ है इसी के साथ राजस्थान में लगभग 14 जीआई हैं जो कि uh, करीब एक वर्ष पहले तक सब ग्रांट हो चुके हैं हम लोग एक uh, मिशन के साथ में आगे बढ़ रहे हैं कि हम जीआई प्रोडक्ट्स को टैगिंग के साथ में ब्रांडिंग के साथ में बेच सके लेकिन अभी तक भी जो वास्तविकताएं हैं वो बहुत दूर है कि लोग आईपीआर का या जीआई के महत्व को समझे वो लोग इसकी ब्रांडिंग के प्रति या इसके रजिस्टर्ड यूजर होने के प्रति बहुत ही अवेयरनेस उनकी बहुत लो है तो मैं आगे और दोबारा बात करना चाहूंगा मैं अभी अपने इस बात के साथ में कि आईपीआर के बारे में ना तो आर्टिजंस के पास में ना एक्ट के लिए अगर कहीं पर कंप्लेन करना है उनके पास में इसकी कोई जानकारी है कि ऐसा कोई एक्ट भी है 
तो जैसे और बात आगे बढ़ती है फिर मैं दोबारा अपनी बात को रखना चाहूंगा धन्यवाद बिल्कुल ये आपने बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण बात बोली और पारंपरिक डिजाइन और जो डिजाइन एक कम्युनिटी के होते हैं वो किसको वो किसकी संपत्ति है वो कौन उसको ओन करता है कौन उसको क्लेम कर सकता है जी रोहन जी हमें थोड़ा और बताएंगे व्यक्तिगत डिजाइन तो एक तरह से थोड़ा ज्यादा आसान है जानना कि ये मेरा डिजाइन है चलिए वो फॉलो हुए ना हुए वो अलग बात है बट उसको क्लेम तो किया जा सकता है कम्युनिटी का फिर एक और कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी आ जाती है कि ये तो सामूहिक ओनरशिप है इसकी और कौन है उस समूह का हेड अगर कोई उसको सही तरीके से भी यूज करना चाहता है तो वो किसके पास जाए कि हम आपका डिजाइन यूज कर सकते हैं या नहीं या इसके क्या कर सकते हैं सो रोहन आई हैव लेफ्ट यू नो योर इंट्रोडक्शन फॉर द एंड सो दैट यू कैन इंट्रोड्यूस योर सेल्फ एंड देन tell us more about the topic itself <clears throat> thank you meeta thank you so much first of all to you and meera for having me here and it's an honor to be among such a distinguished panel who are actually working on the ground in the cultural sphere so briefly just about me uh, i am a lawyer practicing in delhi and my main sphere of practice is intellectual property which while we go on will i will just clarify what uh, intellectual property includes and uh, apart from intellectual property i practice in some other areas of laws which might or might not be really relevant to the discussion here but i'll just uh, expand for everyone's knowledge i deal with uh, sports law media entertainment uh, cultural rights as well what is the topic of discussion and which falls within the domain of all of these uh, aspects and apart from that there are other aspects of law which i think i will just leave it at that uh, not to bore you with what i do uh, so just you know going just taking the conversation forward from where bridgey mentioned about geographical indications so geographical indications is actually the only law where a community can apply for the right there are some aspects in trademarks law as well what we call as collective marks and so even in copyright there are ways that you can apply for in in a collective manner but those are rights which can also be applied by individuals or corporates but geographical indications which came into effect in 2003 in india is the only law which where an association of persons or a body can apply for and various examples of this could be madhubani paintings filigree which you know filigree comes from odisha madhubani paintings from bihar there are various uh, such gis 400 plus gis in india which are registered as on date now going forward i will briefly just tell uh, briefly about what all uh, falls within the domain of intellectual property so there is what we call as trademarks where you know you can apply for a name a logo a design for example the logo of creative dignity and creative dignity as a name itself these are trademarks individually and as a whole so for uh, the communities you can certainly apply for a collective mark right now india does not have any provision in the trademark law where if a third party tries and applies for a mark which might belong to a community or a tribe that you have any mechanism to search a database or object on that ground at this point of time however there are countries like new zealand or south africa or in the andean region which actually actually have provisions to protect their local communities or the indigenous people as they call it for example in new zealand you have the maoris who are the indigenous people from new zealand so in trademarks there's actually a maori council which advises the registrar of trademarks so you can in case you apply for a trademark which has elements of the maori culture you will have to they will then seek the permission of the maori council and only if they allow that can the trademark go ahead otherwise it is a refusal right so briefly this is what is about trademarks and its connection with 
the uh, let us say the cultural aspect of it. Let's say what Seva does is his his name of his platform is a trademark, right? Uh, thereafter, you have a copyright. Now, copyright is a very wide term, and a lot uh, what a lot of you do might fall within the domain of copyright, might not, depending on each individual case. Now, copyright protects anything and everything from a film, a song, a lyrics, a book, to even handicrafts, which might also fall in other aspects of, let's say, designs or GI, but there could be aspects of it which could fall within copyright as well. Photographs, engravings, your computer softwares, all of this falls within the domain of copyrights. This is not an exhaustive list that I'm mentioning, but just uh, an illustrative list. Then you have what Bridgie mentioned as geographical indications. Now, geographical indication is something which comes closest to uh, cultural rights. Now, there are certain aspects you can protect under GI, and there are certain aspects you cannot protect under GIs. So, for example, uh, a lot of your handicrafts, a lot of your food products, for example, let's say cheese from the European region is actually registered as a GI in India. Champagne from the Champagne region is a registered GI. The Mexican uh, spice is actually registered GI. So I'm giving examples of the international GIs. Domestically, we obviously have more than 300 GIs, which could include, like Bridgie mentioned, Sanganer, Sanganeri block printing. It includes the Chikaswang shawls from the Nagaland uh, region. And I'll also come to their case uh, later on, which when we actually go on with the slides. Uh, so GIs are the closest, but there are some loopholes in terms of what can be and cannot be registered as a GI. And also the difference between cultural rights is this is only geographic based. This is not community based. So that is a difference in a geographical indication. That's why it's the term is geographical, right? Thereafter, you have what we call as patents. So patents would fall within, let's say, a process of production or a lot of these products that you use in your day-to-day -day lives uh, fall within the domain of patents. Uh, medicines, pharmaceuticals fall within the domain of patents. A lot of your car engines will fall within the domain of patents. These, I mean, there, there's an endless list of products that can fall within the domain of patents, be it electrical, botanical, mechanical. So these are, prim and designs uh, is the other uh, intellectual property where the, the design of a product Let's say, uh, I think the best example of uh, IP would be the phones we use, right? So here is a phone, right? The, the design of this phone can be registered as a design. The operating software, a lot of you use might, might be using an Android or an Apple, which are basically softwares. Those are operating systems. They can be applied for as a copyright and or a patent as well, depending on the jurisdiction and the applicability of it. The semiconductor chips that you have within this can be protected under semiconductor law or even under patents if applicable. So the let's say if you're using an Apple or a Samsung, the name itself and the logos are trademarks. So primarily a phone is uh, an, the best form of intellectual property. Your cards, the design of a car is a design. The engine can be uh, the, the, you know, the subject matter of a patent, right? So these are basic examples of intellectual property. I mean, nowadays we're talking even about, you know, metaverses and NFTs, where we are still talking about how does IP apply to them? And the cases of NFTs also being infringed upon. And it also, you know, we will talk about this later, but uh, when we talk about cultural rights, NFTs become very important as well. So briefly, this is what is, uh, as we call the Western concepts of intellectual property. Now, the problem that comes in is all these Western concepts of intellectual property are not focusing on communities. Till now, a lot of what all of you do was presumed to be in the public domain. Like when Radesh ji mentioned about pottery, you've been doing it for you know 1400 plus years. 
uh, it was presumed that all of this is in public domain and cannot be protected by any one community or individual. However, that is changing over the last uh, you know, three, four decades. There have been discussions on the international levels, the regional levels, as well as national levels. While today we do not have any law apart from, like I mentioned, GI, various countries have laws. For example, the Andean region, which consists of Peru, Ecuador, which is primarily a very tribal region. Uh, the African countries, uh, like I mentioned, New Zealand, Australia, right? So uh, Mexico, uh, even uh, US is coming up with a law while they do have other provisions to protect the Native Americans and their cultural rights. In India, we do not have any such law. But a few years back, the Supreme Court in a judgment did recognize this was in relation to actually a, nothing to do with cultural rights, but this was to do with the mining uh, matter where the rights, the cultural rights of a community were recognized for the first time by any court, uh, including the Supreme Court of India. Right now, the question that comes in now is what, how do we really go forward from here? So before we do that, I would just like to, you know, share a few examples of uh, what is commonly known as misappropriation and what we legally will call as infringement uh, in, uh, you know, legal parlance. So Meeta, if uh, I could just, you know, give you a few examples of what I'm talking about before we take the discussion forward. Absolutely. I would, can you just, I mean, either I can do it or if you can do it right now or later, just uh, encapsulate this really small in Hindi as well. Sure. I'm happy to do it. Or if you can do it, that's even more wonderful. Mm -hmm. Just, sure. just so, to really uh, show. We can do it after your pres after the visuals as well. Uh -huh, sure. If you want, I can speak in Hindi as well for the presentation. That is more convenient for all. I think so, a mix of both is fine. Great. So, um, just... So what we basically call as a, you know cultural misappropriation, what we were talking about, is a relatively dominant culture of taking a traditional cultural expression, or the terms used nowadays are intangible cultural heritage or expressions of folklore, could be different terms being used in different uh, regions, but it's basically referring to the same, and repurposing it in a different context without authorization, acknowledgement, and or compensation in a way that causes harm to the traditional cultural expression holder, which could either be an indigenous uh, and in our context, a tribal person or a local community. So what I'm going to do is just show a few examples of misappropriation that have happened in India and around the world for just you know showing the context uh, in this matter. So, Way back in 94, Disney applied for a trademark on Hakuna, Hakuna Matata. Now, Hakuna Matata is something all of us at some point of time have just, uh, you know, stated like that or uh, in, in a fun manner. But Hakuna Matata actually belongs to the, is a part of the Swahili language and belongs to the Swahili people of Africa. And Disney went ahead and applied for a trademark. Now, while there was no legal case as such against Disney, however, based on, you know, an online petition going on, uh, Disney actually went back and withdrew the application. Why? Because it was trying to protect a mark which belonged to a tribe. While there was no law as such to protect the tribe, however, at times, the uh, uh, there are ways of persuasive ways of dealing with these kind of issues. Now, in May 2019, the shoe that you see here is uh, something that Nike came out with and which they said is an Air Force Puerto Rico. And the if you would see this aspect, which is just below, just behind the Nike logo, is actually originating from the Guna culture of Panama which was fairly opposed by them. And ultimately, Nike had to cancel the release of this shoe. So this is another example of 
when you were mentioning about uh you know fashion companies or sportswear brands uh misappropriating the designs of a community this again is another example where uh, a uk fashion brand ktz copied a traditional inuit which basically is something uh, inuit community if i'm not mistaken comes from the alaska region and this is their traditional design and you could see the comparisons on the left and the right again this is a this is lv with a blanket which was inspired by the native people of lesotho so fashion is uh, fashion industry uh, i think has the maximum number of misappropriation cases there was a recent case of uh, the carolina herrera brand copying the one of the mexican uh, tribes their designs and uh, the mexican the mexican government sent them a notice and they had to then withdraw the designs as well now this is uh, a case which is uh, which happened in india again not a case but an example of misappropriation as a lot of you would recognize these are designs which basically belong to the worli tribe of thani and bata came out with these slippers uh in 2019 uh which was titled as pata pata and they put the worli tribe designs on these slippers there was obviously an online petition and uh, while nothing is really out there in the public domain but bata uh, ultimately did end up withdrawing uh, these uh, slippers now this was an interesting case that happened when uh, bridgey was mentioning about gi and lack of knowledge this is one of the cases where a tribal uh, outfit has gone against uh, a very famous designer uh, most of us have heard about ritu berry and trifed so in 2020 at uh, the suraj kund mela that happens every february which is organized by the government uh, there was a fashion show where ritu berry this is what was actually displayed at the uh, fashion show now these are designs which are actually gi registered of the chikaswang tribe from nagaland and uh, what is interesting is in the chikaswang uh, culture there are different clothings for men and different clothings for women now what was done here is what you see what the women are wearing is primarily what the men are supposed to wear in the culture so this is what the women wear and the men wore what the women usually wear so it wasn't just a, a a case of infringement of the gi but also of a cultural misappropriation and hurting the sentiments of the tribe these are the registered gis which on the left is what the men wear on the right what the women wear as you would see this is usually what the women wear in the uh, in the community so this was i think one of the first few cases where uh the tribes have actually gone against uh somebody of uh, repute of ritu berry and why we do not know the outcome but this was again one of the first few cases here now uh this is again something interesting is uh which we realized while watching this movie a lot of you would have seen this logo of pooja entertainment which is uh, a very famous production house Uh, and if you see the logo just above pooja is uh, seems to be a, a spin off of the designs of the worli tribe on the right yes so basically these have been a few cases around the world there certainly a lot of cases happening here and there and um, as we are speaking like i mentioned just before the call um the world intellectual property organization which deals with ip conventions and treaties is actually uh, discussing a treaty or a convention on protection of traditional cultural expressions now the the question that comes in is how is it different from gi uh like i mentioned gi is more a community right but geographically relevant a lot of the rights that we are talking about might not be geographically relevant but might be relevant in terms of a community 
right? So in India also, uh, the government is discussing on bringing up a law like this to protect the rights of the tribals and the local communities, which were till now presumed to be in the public domain. Uh, apart from that, India is also party to the Intangible Cultural Heritage Convention, where a lot of our intangible cultural heritage has been protected with UNESCO. So this is primarily, in a nutshell, what is uh, happening in India and around the world. And I open it up for questions to take this conversation forward. Thank you, Rohan. Uh, that's... The examples were really, uh, they really helped make things clear. Um, may I, I just want to literally in two lines sum it up in Hindi. So I think I'll just go ahead and do that. You have told us that there are different ways to register things, whether it is scientific discoveries, whether it is a name of the company. And we have to say that टॉपिक पे हम बात कर रहे हैं हमारे लिए सबसे रेलेवेंट जीआई है जो कि ज्योग्राफिकल इंडिकेटर राइट इज दैट द फुल फॉर्म रोहन ज्योग्राफिकल इंडिकेशन यस ज्योग्राफिकल इंडिकेशन है सो so, uh, हमारे लिए सबसे रेलेवेंट वही है और इंडिया में तकरीबन 300 से 400 ये अलग-अलग जीआईज रजिस्टर्ड हैं चाहे वो दार्जिलिंग चाय में हो चाहे वो किसी पर्टिकुलर शॉल में हो वार्ली पेंटिंग में हो अलग-अलग स्किल्स के जीआई रजिस्टर्ड हैं आपने हमें दिखाया इंडिया के बाहर और इंडिया के अंदर कुछ एग्जांपल्स जिसमें ये यूज किए गए जिस कम्युनिटी के वो थे उसके अलावा लोगों ने यूज किए उनको एक्नॉलेज नहीं किया ये नहीं बोला कि यहां से है और शायद उन लोगों ने उससे उनको कुछ आर्थिक बेनिफिट भी मिला कुछ फाइनेंशियल बेनिफिट भी मिला तो आई थिंक एवरीवन विल हैव बहुत सारे क्वेश्चंस आएंगे सबके मन में होंगे सबके दिमाग में होंगे आई एम श्योर आई हैव वन सो आई वुड लाइक टू स्टार्ट विद एक चीज है जैसे सुदक्षिणा कह रही थी कि स्मॉल जो ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस हैं या जो कम्युनिटीज हैं किसी का टर्नओवर इतना बड़ा तो है नहीं दैट यू रजिस्टर एवरीथिंग दैट यू डू after registration also zaruri nahi hai ki humne register kiya kisi ne hamara design ya hamare ya to usko copy kiya ya to galat bola ki ye is school of design se hai ye sanganeri print type of print hai ya ye kalamkari hai chahe wo ho na ho so in such a situation one is how do we record this and register this as ours is it always going to be an expensive uh, option aur dusra agar humne record kiya bhi to hum usko kis koi tarika hai kya hamare paas protect karne ka usko theek hai mita i get your point so uh, isme do cheeze hain india mein protection itna expensive nahi hai jo perceive kara jata hai hmm. aur uh, kuch last few years mein government ne slabs bana diye hain टिल फ्यू इयर्स बैक एक ही स्लैब हुआ करता था इरिस्पेक्टिव कि आप बड़े कंपनी हो कि छोटे कंपनी आज के टाइम पे इंडिविजुअल्स एमएसएमई स्टार्टअप सबके लिए अलग अलग कॉस्टिंग uh, दे दी है और गवर्नमेंट की कुछ स्कीम्स भी हैं जो हो सकते हैं कम्युनिटीज पे एप्लीकेबल हो या ना हो बट आई थिंक ये एक बहुत uh, अच्छी चीज है जो हम गवर्नमेंट के साथ डेलीब्रेट कर सकते हैं कि जैसे एमएसएमईज और स्टार्टअप्स को इतनी सुविधाएं दी जा रही है मैं एग्जांपल देता हूं गवर्नमेंट की एक स्टार्टअप प्रोटेक्शन स्कीम है मे बी शिवाजी अवेयर हो सिंस ही माइट फॉल विद इन दैट डोमेन अगर आप एक स्टार्टअप है और अगर आप अपने लिए ट्रेडमार्क या पैटेंट या डिजाइन अप्लाई करते हैं थ्रू समबडी हु इज रजिस्टर्ड एज अ फैसिलिटेटर विद द गवर्नमेंट उसमें आपको सिर्फ सरकारी फी देनी है आपके लॉयर को जो उसकी प्रोफेशनल फी है जो कैब्ड है वो गवर्नमेंट पे करती है ऐसे ही एमएसएमईज में अगर आप एक एमएसएमई हो तो आपको रिबेट मिलता है एंड अब आपका जो मार्क कल को रजिस्टर हो जाता है 
एमएसएमई गव द एमएसएमई मिनिस्ट्री हैज अ स्कीम जहां पे आप एक uh, उनको अप्लाई करके समथिंग लाइक अ कैशबैक आपको एक रिबेट uh, को एक अलग चीज हो गई आपको आपका पैसा भी वापस मिल सकता है जो आपने इन्वेस्ट करा है इन द फॉर्म ऑफ अ प्रोफेशनल फी और ऑफिशियल फी सो ऐसी स्कीम्स हैं गवर्नमेंट की जहां तक मेरी नॉलेज है ऐसा कुछ भी कोई स्कीम हैंडीक्राफ्ट uh, या आर्टिजन के लिए नहीं है बट ये एक अच्छा पॉइंट हो सकता है डेलिब्रेट करने के लिए गवर्नमेंट के साथ कि ऐसी कोई सुविधाएं जो हैं कल्चरल और हैंडीक्राफ्ट सेक्टर को भी एक्सटेंड करी जाए जहां पे फाइनेंशियल आर ऑब्वियसली एन इशू सो आई थिंक दिस कुड बी अ पॉइंट ऑफ डिस्कशन एज अ पॉलिसी एज अ मैटर ऑफ पॉलिसी रोहन कैन आई ब्रिंग अराउंड पिक्चर प्लीज अराउंड पिक्चर हम लोगों का क्या प्रॉब्लम होता है हम सोचिए एज आई टोल्ड यू दिस इज दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रोडक्ट विच आई वी विल शो यू द पिक्चर ऑफ इज एक्चुअली राजेश्वरी इज हियर वी बॉट द वर्ल्ड क्राफ्ट काउंसिल अवार्ड इट इज अ पेटेंटेड प्रोडक्ट इफ यू सी माई डिजाइन पेटेंट नंबर ऑल्सो आई फुट ऑन टॉप ठीक है पर आप अगर देखोगे I just managed to capture only 16 of the options. आप अगर Amazon में जाओगे there are at least 25 to 30 people who are copying this basic thing. ठीक है ये हमारे सबसे लाइक वेन वी फर्स्ट पेटेंटेड अराउंड दो हजार चौदह में हम लोग वीज टू सेल अराउंड थाउजेंड ऑफ दिस इन अयर तो अभी ये साल में वी हैव कम डाउन टू थ्री हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी थ्री जब्स ठीक है हमारे जो क्वालिटी है फार uh, सुपीरियर हमारे जो आर्टिजनल द क्वालिटी बोलिए हमारे जो द क्वालिटी ऑफ कॉपर वी टेस्ट ईच बैच ऑफ कॉपर ओके तो दिस इज द वी कॉल इट वेन वी सेलेट इन वेन वी सेलेट इन एमेजन वी कॉल इट द ओरिजिनल प्योर कॉपर वेबसाइट करा पर वो अगर कोई देखते हैं 2900 में बेच रहे हैं हम और कोई सात सौ नाइनटी नाइन में बेच रहे हैं तो ऑब्वियसली यू नो हाउ वी विल वर्क तो मेरा ये प्रश्न है कि यू नो इवन विद ऑल द डिबेट्स फॉर एम एस एम ईज बोलिए फॉर स्टार्टअप बोलिए हाउ डू आई हैंडल दिस वी हैव जस्ट नाउ गिवन अप एंड सेल ठीक है ये दिस हैज हैपेंड एंड वेल इट हैज हैपेंड तो हम क्या करें तो मैंने देर इज ऑलमोस्ट अ फीलिंग ऑफ we can't do more you know kyunki it's not possible like to uh, send notices to 40 of them we went to the lawyer in 2000 i think 15 by when the first option was coming out uh, uh, we saw the first option on the net uh, that time the lawyer had said in 2015 that for one notice to send is 12000 rupees so we sent one and then we stopped we said hum log ka nahi aayega <laughs> we will not be able to we'll have to move on so uh, and the amount of effort rohan ek jo hamare jo cheez mein jo lagta hai hum log as i said in my initial introduction we are very design centric mm-hmm. so uh, hum log one you know anything with all the iterations of designing and producing and all handmade each and every process is handmade even the spinning that we do is hand spin you know तो ट्रेनिंग करना रेडी करना क्वालिटी देखना करते करते छे सिक्स मंथ्स टू ट्वेल्व मंथ्स इज एनीथिंग दैट गोज बाय ओके तो एंड विद इन टू मंथ्स इफ यू सी योर प्रोडक्ट्स आउट इन द शेल बाय समबडी जस्ट बाइंग इट एंड यू नो डूइंग अ क्विक डाई एंड डूइंग इट इट्स डिफिकल्ट फॉर पीपल लाइक अस एज आई एम सेइंग यू नो वेयर सर्वाइवल फॉर स्मॉल एंटरप्राइजेस इट्स आल्सो अबाउट सर्वाइवल For bigger people, they can you know let go. बोलेंगे कि हाँ ठीक है ये एक डिजाइन का ऐसे हो गया चलेगा पर हम लोगों का उतने सारे you know we have only one Rashmi who designs the products. तो हम नहीं कर सकते हैं कि you know we can produce bundles and bundles of products. तो इस हिसाब से how do we handle the situation like this? This was my question. Great, thanks, Sudarshan. While I mean uh, maybe I'll take this up offline in in you know in terms of your case, but just as a broader issue. Hmm. Just a broader issue. Uh, there are various ways, you know. For example, when you talk about pl- platforms like Amazon or Flipkart, Shopify, there's so many platforms in today's time. These platforms actually have policies, 
right? So even like YouTube, YouTube or Facebook, all of these have IP policies. Very few inform the platform about your rights. These platforms can actually take it down. There are other follow-up issues with that, which I would not Done want to get into right now. Done and dusted. But uh, there are what we call, this is basically called, you know, a takedown measure in, in normal parlance or legal parlance. And there are provisions in the Indian law, which do assist you. So I will, I will say, don't be disheartened. There are ways of, uh, you know, taking care of issues. Well, I don't want to go into the commercials of, you know, how much somebody's charging. I think that is not really relevant at this point, but uh, there are certainly a lot of ways where uh, things can be dealt with. You know, we, we take out caution notices in newspapers. Uh, we take out, you know, let's say if somebody goes, if you have a website or a web page, you have a caution notice there. So there are various ways of informing the public. The biggest problem is while you have a design, do these 40 or 50 odd people do even know that this is a registered design and not something which is generic to the trade, right? So for that, there has to be some effort in informing the public that this is yours. Otherwise, the normal perception would be this is something generic to the trade. Anybody and everybody can do it. Right? So, informing there the are, yeah. so there are there are various ways of dealing with issues. And uh, whenever there is, you know, be it, you know, uh, that funds is an issue, cannot be just the ground. There are always ways to everything. Right? Uh, and... Uh, I mean, I would be happy to discuss this with you offline specifically, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, there are various ways of dealing with it. There is no uh, shortage of solutions to uh, taking care of this. And just a very small uh, point, not very relevant, but in India, we don't call it design patent. We only call it design. Design patent is a US terminology. Yeah. yeah. We, here we just call it. It was design. written just design. I just thought uh -huh. for anybody to understand, I use the word patent. Yeah. Right. It was just design, design number so and so. Correct. Right, right, right. So in India, we yes. differentiate between yes, a design yes. and a patent. Yeah. Uh, but this is the terminology they use in the US and maybe in some other countries as well. No, no. It was design. In the, in the form, right. it's design. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, I would just say that, see, there are various measures for everything. It is just a matter of awareness. Uh, I'll, I'll just go back to, you know, 2016, uh, the government came out with a national IPR policy in 2016. And uh, one of the uh, pointers in the policy was to also raise awareness among the artisans, the cultural sector, to what kind of options do you have? Because when you say even geographical indications, there's a huge involvement of the government. Because just applying for a GI is not very simple. There's a whole research involved in a GI. Uh, there are GIs which can actually be going across geographies or going across states. In India, there are there could be GIs which you know only one community might not have. I'll give you an example. I think a few years back when, uh, you know, Ap uh, APEDA, the Agricultural Produce, uh, I think Export Development Authority is what the full form is, applied for a GI for Basmati. Now, the usual perception is that Basmati in India grows usually towards the Punjab region. But Basmati grows all across in Madhya Pradesh and various parts of the country. So there were a lot of other associations that came in and said, you can't just give it to them. Then even the Pakistan, some, uh, the government agency from Pakistan also filed it because there's a huge production of Basmati in Pakistan as well. Right? So basically the point is in GIs, you have to have a proper uh, empirical data to apply for a GI. Like, for example, if you talk about a community, how long has a community been doing it? A lot of the archival records, the regions that it is actually, let us say, depending on what kind of product it is, made in or grown in, right? So there are various things one needs to do when you apply for a GI. And the government does provide a lot of support to these uh, associations. Sometimes it is 
the the government body which is applying for it on behalf of uh, these artisans whose list is also then uh, provided that these are the people who are authorized uh, people or you know what we can call licensees or people who can who are authorized to produce and sell in the market anybody else doing it is infringing that right mm. right so uh, there are various mechanisms to deal with things the other issue i believe is while i mean we have not come to that topic is uh, nowadays like i was mentioning earlier fashion is one industry where there is a huge misappropriation happening now like you mentioned i understand that you know funds is a big issue and access to a lot of things is a big issue for communities uh, what i believe here is that the way forward is not being uh, adversarial the way forward is trying to see can these both these sides now we know the issues right communities at times the fashion houses don't even know that this is something which belongs to a community and sometimes the community does not know how do i deal with it they do not know what is to be done so i think it's a lack of various issues it's a lack of databases it's a lack of awareness it's also let's say if a fashion house actually knows that this <laughs> belongs to a certain tribe or a certain community how do i reach out to that design uh, how do i reach out to that community how do i reach out to that tribe so i think there are various issues that are there and which only conversations and discussions will help us in reaching that point i'll give you examples of uh, while not from the fashion industry but one example i've been often quoting nowadays in all my sessions is uh, a lot of you would have heard of the movie called frozen 2 that disney came out frozen 2 is actually based on the sami people who are the indigenous people of the scandinavian countries mainly finland denmark norway and and sweden now when frozen 1 came out which was basically a folk tale of the sami people the sami people wrote to disney that you have distorted our culture so now rather than being adversarial what did disney do disney entered into an agreement with the sami people they said you come on board you guide us you tell us what your culture is and what can we incorporate in the movie and that was probably the first time where a corporate entity and the indigenous people entered into an agreement respecting each other and then there was a certain obviously a certain royalty that was given to the sami people their consent was sought and you know the movie did very well there was not hurting the cultural sentiments of the relevant people and if you actually google you will find uh, various photographs from the premiere where the sami people in their traditional clothing are there on the red carpet so uh, what i'm basically trying to say is there are issues but what needs to be done is try till the time a law comes in various countries have laws uh, when i was mentioning about the carolina herrera case it was post that that mexico came out with a law which came into effect in january now what does that law do the law says all the communities will register their names their relevant ip they are basically creating a database so th- tomorrow if you want to apply they are not saying that the communities are not saying that don't take our designs if you are taking our designs do it in a proper lawful manner appreciating us giving us the due recognition and sharing part of the profits with us which help in the development of that community so that the whole question of communities going you know uh, not having funds they not really having any financial uh, uh you know savings all that uh, really goes so i think what is important is working together in tandem maybe having conversation with the relevant uh, industries while i can't disclose much but i can tell you uh, there are there are efforts at various different organizations where they are trying to get these industries and the relevant indigenous communities together to discuss and see to it how they can work together because you also need these communities to send out this information to send out you know they also want their designs 
to go out they also want people to maybe wear these their designs but they don't have the means to do that so maybe they can partner with these companies where they get these benefits and their uh their their work or their expression whatever whatever you want to use the term as you know is going out to the public as well unless it falls you know something what we call as secret tcs something they don't want to disclose to the public right <clears throat> yeah that sounds so from what i'm hearing you say rohan is that we have to continue to be in conversation with anybody we feel who is appropriating whether knowingly or unknowingly the whatever design or patent or whatever you whatever is the exact technical name for that particular let's let's maybe let's maybe call it cultural expressions for everyone's convenience right right thank you for that so um we have a question there was uh, dinesh chipa was asking uh had his hand up dinesh ji aap ke paas koi sawal hai shayad puchne ko ha sabhi ko namaskar mera ek chota sa sawal tha ki agar koi gi holder koi association register gi registered users nahi banata hai apne geographical area mein to hum uske liye kya kar sakte hain aise hum kya take the action le ya kis tarah se hum jaye hum registered user ban sakte hain उसके लिए दिनेश जी तरीके हैं एक्ट में आप चाहे जीआई रजिस्ट्री में एप्लीकेशन डाल सकते हैं और अगर वो एप्लीकेशन एक्सेप्ट नहीं होती है तो उसके और भी तरीके हैं बट शुरू में एक तरीका यही है कि आप एप्लीकेशन डालें और उस प्रोसेस को आगे लेके जाएं अच्छा अगर आपको ऑथराइज यूजर बनना है तो उसके लिए आपको एप्लीकेशन डालनी पड़ेगी जी रजिस्ट्री में पर्सनली डाल सकता हूँ मैं आप पर्सनली भी डाल सकते हैं आप किसी लॉयर के थ्रू भी डाल सकते हैं दोनों चीजें कर सकते हैं मतलब मुझे वो जीआई जो जीआई होल्डर है जो उससे जब हम बोलते हैं एनओसी या या कोई उसकी जरूरत नहीं है अगर आप एप्लीकेशन डाल रहे हैं ऑथोराइज यूजर बनने के लिए हाँ तो वो उनके पास भी जाएगा की ये हमारे पास रिक्वेस्ट आई है इसमें आपको क्या कहना है ओके थैंक यू उसके अलग अलग तरीके हैं उसमें से एक तरीका ये ओके थैंक्स I had a question, Rohan. Meera, up. Sorry, uh, Meera. I think you are. No, sir. Sorry, I think Shiva has something to say. Let's hear Shiva. Oh, sorry, I can't see him on my screen. Yeah. Hanji. Shiva, Shiva, go ahead. Uh, so I think this was very, uh, very informative, Rohan. Um, in fact, I uh, met a designer in US who was actually doing the something interesting where she was trying to build a collection of. Um, uh, indigenous designs where i think she was managing the ip or working with the indigenous communities and uh, facilitating collaboration with brands um, so i think uh, so it was actually you know rather than misappropriating you know why don't you do it in the right way uh, taking the consent of the indigenous communities and obviously they also getting some royalty right on on the products that are uh, finally sold by the brands designers and brands mm mm-hmm. um i i don't remember the name of the site and the designer but i can maybe share that later sure. but i had a, a slightly different question uh, for all of us right uh, uh, so i think one is i think uh, misappropriation is one thing but i was using this word misrepresentation right so this is what is i think kind of a bigger uh, you know sure. elephant elephant in the room according to me um you know when you look at today you know we have like so many uh, traditional arts and craft forms in this country right mm-hmm. and uh, today you know there is something which is inevitably i think lot of it is is being produced in surat sorry i mean i'm not trying to call it out <laughs> as such but uh, but you know you have all these banarasis you know all these kanjivarams now actually being produced in surat and then you know they they that's how they are sold right you know these are actually gi protected crafts but today you these are flooded in marketplace right in fact by big brands selling uh, kanjivarams uh, you know selling pitani selling uh, you know uh, banarasis which are neither from banaras nor are they you know done by the the traditional craft people they are produced by a in a factory maybe 10000 pieces a day uh, in 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 very high large scale mass produced products so what is it that as a community as a 
uh, as as an ecosystem right i mean i mean one is the legal aspect the other is also you know in general i feel this is the biggest threat which is being faced by the craft sector today thank you shiva i think a very relevant question and i think it all boils down to awareness i feel you know while you can take whatever legal action you might want to take but like i was also mentioning to sudakshana uh, i think it is while everybody you know has sought some kind of protection at some point of time what is the level of awareness of the public or the community or the industry where you know it is perceived that a lot of these have come out in the public domain whereas whereas they have not so i think it's also a matter of awareness a matter of uh, perception which needs to change and where obviously even after awareness and perce- perceptions not changing then obviously legal is the only way left but i think the first way will always be awareness and that is what you know the government like i was mentioning about the national ip policy the government has actually created a body which is called cpam uh, c i p a m which is going across the country and educating and making everybody aware about the ip laws they're also doing sessions with with what i'm aware of uh, even with uh, you know certain designers and certain uh, handicrafts uh, uh, artisans where they're making them aware of their rights so i think it is what we need to probably do is make everyone aware it could be i mean this is a wonderful platform where you can reach anybody and everybody virtually you can do physical sessions there could be literature coming out i think there's a lot that can be done and aware it everything starts from awareness because while there's a lot on the books uh, and I, to be honest i think we have one of the best ip laws you know around the world which are in consonance with uh, all the international conventions and treaties largely i think what is required is awareness on one how you can protect your rights two why you should not infringe the others rights and what is to be done if you want to use anybody else's uh, rights you know i think these are things which need to be done which are being done to a large level but given the magnitude of this country and you know the width and breadth of this country we need to do a lot of awareness and if despite the lack of i mean despite the awareness like i mentioned if they still want to do it then obviously uh you know then you need to go down the legal path but uh, that is what my um, you know answer to your query would be seva and i hope that uh, does help yeah thanks thanks rohan uh so rohan i mean i agree with what shiva is saying that one thing is if somebody's intent shuru se uska intention hi galat hai ke usne copy karna hai usne 50000 ki saadi jo bahut dheere se banti hai usko 500 rupaye mein bechna hai kisi mill mein bana ke then clearly the intent right from the beginning is not okay it's not a question of uh, i don't know the best practice and so i'm not following it i don't want to do it i want my you know my idea is only something else yes. so are there any government bodies like you mentioned the cpam are there any government bodies that if they are going around if their job is to educate people who make this are they the right people to lobby for these cases or we are kind of on our own and so you just you have to go through the you legal will not, system uh, you know you will not lobby with the government for ca- legal cases but you can certainly lobby with the government for policies mm. and the you know change in law uh that <clears throat> maybe the punishments can be made harsher some of the mm-hmm. you know some of the uh, laws that i mentioned earlier which fall within the domain of ip uh, a lot of them also have penal provisions which uh, mm-hmm. like for example in copyright uh, you know certain of the offenses are non bailable now so there is certainly uh, a lot that is there but i believe ultimately like you mentioned if there is any change in the policy that needs to be done uh i mean that is probably uh how you will have to do it yeah like kunal morya is also saying the same thing i don't know if you've seen his comment about uh rohan uh 
and I think Meera has her hand up since a and while. Bridgey also, yeah. So, Bridgey also, okay. It's not showing on my screen. Yeah. Bridgey is the is a panelist. I'll ask him to go first. Yes. If he has to tell. Ji, I want to tell you more about telling because we are here with the Gunijan. So, as we talk about IPR, which is ट्रेडमार्क या अपना कॉपीराइट या पेटेंट या उसके बाद जीआई या और भी बहुत कुछ है लेकिन जब हम ये देखने के लिए आगे बढ़ते हैं कि इनका हमारे दैनिक जीवन में उपयोग कितना सार्थक होता है इस संदर्भ में शायद हम बहुत पीछे रह जाते हैं और उसका एक उदाहरण कि पिछले दो साल पहले बगरू जो कि एक गांव गांव ट्रेडमार्क करवा लिया और उस गांव में रहने वाले जो लोग हैं जो कि हैंडलॉक प्रिंटिंग का काम करते हैं उनको उन्होंने नोटिस दिया कि आप बगरू के नाम बगरू नाम का इस्तेमाल अपने प्रोडक्ट्स में नहीं कर सकते जबकि 2011-10 में बगरू हैंडलॉक प्रिंटिंग को जीआई मिल चुका है तो यहां पर मतलब सरकार के स्तर पर आईपीआर के स्तर पर डिपार्टमेंट के स्तर पर इस तरह की चूक होती है और वो चूक आज तक भी ठीक नहीं हुई है इसी के साथ में क्योंकि मैं सांगानेर का हूं सांगानेर में एक कंपनी बनी जो भारत सरकार के वस्त्र मंत्रालय ने सपोर्ट करके वो एक प्रोड्यूसर कंपनी बनी जिसका नाम सांगानेरी हैंडलॉक प्रिंटिंग प्रोड्यूसर्स कंपनी है तो मेरा मंतव्य ये था कि इस तरीके से आ, कोई भी कॉर्पोरेट अफेयर्स या आईपीआर किसी को भी कुछ भी देता है जो कि उसका रिलेवेंस होता है या नहीं होता है जिसके कारण उस गांव के लोगों को या उस क्लस्टर के लोगों को कोई फर्क पड़ता है नहीं पड़ता है लेकिन आ, अंततः ये गलत है इस बात के लिए मेरा पक्ष है कि ऐसा नहीं होना चाहिए तो यहाँ पर प्रश्नावली मेरी ये है कि क्या इस तरह की चीजों को रोकने के लिए आ, कोई तरीका कोई कानून कोई आ, रास्ता या किसी की मदद है जिससे कि हम इन इस तरह की एक्टिविटीज को जो कि आने वाले समय में और ज्यादा होने वाली है जैसे कि अमेजोन और जियो पर हैंड ब्लॉक प्रिंटिंग करके नॉन हैंड ब्लॉक प्रिंटेड प्रोडक्ट्स को बेचा जाता है ये बिल्कुल सरासर मतलब धोखाधड़ी है एक यूजर के साथ में एक कस्टमर के साथ में तो कौन से ऐसे तरीके हैं जिसमें कि जैसे पिछले दिनों हुआ कि पिछले साल में सब्य साची ने कॉपी किया सागानेर के मोटिव्स को और सब्य साची को एक शिकन तक नहीं है चेहरे पर कि वो एक माफी भी मांगे कि मैंने गलत किया है तो मतलब ये तो चोरी और सीना चोरी तो इसके बारे में राजेश जी है मैं उनके उनसे सुनना चाहूंगा कि आपने एक सीपीएम या कोई ऐसी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बताई है वो क्या है उसके बारे में और कुछ हमको ज्ञान दीजिए क्योंकि आपने अभी बहुत सारा अंग्रेजी में इधर उधर किया लेकिन हमको तो बहुत कुछ समझ में ही नहीं आया राजेश जी <laughs> राजेश जी से कह रहे हैं या मेर से कह रहे हैं आपसे सर आपसे आपसे मैं अच्छा जी मेरा नाम रोहन है थोड़ी कंफ्यूजन हो गई मैं माफी चाहूंगा कि मैंने अंग्रेजी में बहुत बोल दिया ज्यादा लेकिन आ, ऐसा है जो आपका पहला प्रश्न था उसके लिए काफी प्रावधान है कानून के अंदर कि अगर कोई ट्रेडमार्क के लिए अप्लाई करता है ऐसे बल्कि ट्रेडमार्क लॉ के अंदर एक प्रावधान ये भी है कि अगर कोई रजिस्टर्ड जी है तो अगर कोई तीसरी पार्टी आके उसके नाम पे ट्रेडमार्क अप्लाई करती है तो उसके तरीके भी हैं उसको चैलेंज करने के एक तरीका पहले ये होता है कि जब मैं थोड़ा टेक्निकल जा रहा हूं लेकिन अगर आपका ट्रेडमार्क जब ट्रेडमार्क रजिस्ट्री एक्सेप्ट कर लेती है तो एक ट्रेडमार्क का जर्नल आता है जो ऑफिशियल गैजेट है सरकार का उसके अंदर वो ट्रेडमार्क छपता है और कोई भी उसको चार महीने के अंदर 
उसकी रजिस्ट्रेशन को अपोज कर सकता है एक तो ये तरीका होता है दूसरा ये तरीका होता है कि अगर उन्होंने वो रजिस्टर कर लिया तो उसके बाद जिसको हम कहते हैं रेक्टिफिकेशन या कैंसिलेशन पिटिशन भी डाल सकते हैं और इस मामले में जो आप स्पेसिफिकली बता रहे हैं जहां पे वो रजिस्टर्ड जीआई है तो वो रजिस्टर्ड जीआई के बेसिस पे भी आप ट्रेडमार्क ऑफिस में कंप्लेन डाल सकते हैं इसके लिए प्राविधान है ट्रेडमार्क लॉ के अंदर पहली बात यह है दूसरा ये भी है कि अगर आप चाहते हैं कि वो यूज करना भी बंद करें तो हम कल को कोर्ट जाके भी उनको रोक सकते हैं इस बेसिस पे कि ये रजिस्टर्ड जीआई है और ये इसको यूज नहीं कर सकते हैं तो कानून में तरीके हैं ऐसा नहीं है कि तरीके नहीं है जो दूसरी बात आपने बोली कि कोई सरकारी ऐसी संस्था है ये सरकारी संस्थाएं ज्यादातर पॉलिसी को इन्फोर्स करने के लिए है जो उन्होंने सरकार ने काफी जो पॉलिसीज बनाई है उसके बारे में चाहे ज्ञान देने के बारे में है लेकिन अगर आपको किसी भी चीज की आ, कोई गाइडेंस चाहिए उसके लिए आपको एक आ, वकील के पास ही जाना पड़ेगा या जो ट्रेडमार्क हैंडल करते हैं उन्हीं के पास जाना पड़ेगा सरकार आपको कुछ ऐसा है कि जैसे अगर आप चाहें कि आपके आ, सांगानेर में सरकार आके कोई सेशन करे कि लोगों को बताए आप क्या कर सकते क्या नहीं कर सकते कानूनी प्राविधान क्या कहते हैं तो वो सब भी वो वो उनका काम ये है जो सी है उनका काम ज्यादातर यही है कि चाहे वो यूनिवर्सिटी के बच्चे हैं स्कूल के बच्चे हैं या कस्टम ऑफिशियल हैं पुलिस ऑफिशियल हैं जजेस हैं ऐसे आ, हमारी जैसी जैसे आपकी ये संस्था है क्रिएटिव डिग्निटी इनमें आके लोगों को बताएगी क्या क्या आज के टाइम पे आ, ऐसे लॉज हैं और उसमें क्या क्या प्रोविजन हैं जी ओके क्योंकि मुझे साढ़े पांच आई है मुझे मेरी एक अलग दूसरी मीटिंग है तो इसलिए मुझे निकलना पड़ेगा मीटिंग से तो मैं जस्ट थोड़ा यहाँ मेरे दो शब्द कहना चाहती थी कि एक है कि डेफिनेटली आज की जो समस्या बनी है वो एक नई समस्या है और जैसे ब्रिजी ने भी कहा कि और ये बढ़ने वाली है क्योंकि बहुत सारे अभी कॉपोरेट भी ये सेक्टर में आने लगे है और और डेफिनेटली एक एक क्या कहते हैं एक स्ट्रक्चर है एक लीगल स्ट्रक्चर है वो उसके बारे में जानना बहुत जरूरी है और जैसे कि क्रिएटिव डिग्निटी या हम सब मिलके क्रिएटिव डिग्निटी हो आईका हो हैंड फॉर हैंडमेड हो जितने भी नेटवर्क्स हो ये हम आगे चल के ये डिसाइड भी कर सकते हैं कि ऐसी कुछ एक सुविधा या सर्विस हम खड़ी करें जहाँ हम जो लीगल पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू है उस पर हम माहिती अवेयरनेस अगर केस भी लगाना हो तो वो भी एक सुविधा शायद हम ये सब मिलके सोच सके कि वी कैन सेट दैट आउट लेकिन मुझे लग रहा है कि एक दूसरी चीज और भी है कि जो क्योंकि हम ये ट्रेडिशनल प्रैक्टिस की बात कर रहे हैं तो ट्रेडिशनली भी कुछ सिस्टम्स थी कुछ एथिक्स थे कुछ प्रोटोकॉल्स थी थे कि किस तरह से ये जो यू नो लोगों की ब्रांड्स थी या कम्युनिटी कॉपीराइट थी या कम्युनिटी वोकेबुलरीज थी वो उस उनमें से भी एक एथिक्स है कम्युनिटी में और मुझे लगता है कि इट वुड आल्सो बी नाइस और ब्रिज यहाँ है इसके ऊपर मेरे ख्याल से और चर्चा भी हो कि कैसे समुदाय अलग अलग कम्युनिटीज अपनी खुद की चीजें को बचाने के प्रयास करती है और हमारे कंट्री में हमारे देश में ही काफी ऐसे उदाहरण है Uh, मैंने सुने हैं आई एम श्योर इन आर नेटवर्क लॉट ऑफ पीपल मस्ट बी नोइंग अबाउट इट एंड आई थिंक इट वुड बी ग्रेट अगर इसका हम एक मे बी स्टडी इनिशिएट करें इसको हम थोड़ा समझे जैसे अभी रोहन जी ने बताया जैसे न्यूजीलैंड में उन्होंने एक बहुत यूनिक अप्रोच लिया है कि एक माउरी काउंसिल ऑफ एल्डर्स है या जो भी है जो एक गेट कीपर की तरह काम करते हैं वहां पे गवर्नमेंट के साथ तो आई एम श्योर दैट अगर हम खुद अपने खुद के एग्जाम्पल्स uh, देखें उसमें से कुछ ऐसे हमें इंसाइट्स मिल सकते हैं उसमें से हम साथ मिलके सब सोच सकते हैं एंड आई थिंक एवरीबडी सेम द सेम थिंग वेदर इट इज शिवा और रोहन और ब्रिजी दैट यू नीड टू हैव दिस काइंड ऑफ सॉलिडारिटी अंडरस्टैंडिंग अवेयरनेस दैट इज अल्टीमेटली व्हाट इज गोइंग टू मेक द डिफरेंस बिकॉज ये सेक्टर बहुत ही डाइवर्स है बहुत ही बिखरा हुआ है बहुत ही वलनरेबल भी है 
तो ये वलनरेबिलिटी को कैसे हम इसका कैसे हम सामना किया जाए सो आई आई फील देर आर मेनी थिंग्स यू नो दैट वी नीड टू वर्क ऑन अगर हमें ये सीरियसली इस इश्यू पे हमें डीप जाना हो आई मीन द बिगेस्ट प्रॉब्लम इज आई मीन शिवा नोज दैट द बिगेस्ट प्रॉब्लम इज विद पावर लूम सेक्टर विच इज सो ऑर्गेनाइज विच इज सो प्रोटेक्टेड बाई गवर्नमेंट यू नो हाउ आर वी गोइंग टू फाइट दैट and and i feel the only way to do it is like bottom up you know so um, so if if the if only way to do it is what what did you say bottom, is bottom up i mean just rally all up. our wisdom our forces our strengths our solidarity uh, you know i i think that's the only way that we will be able to do this uh, and it's a long haul uh, i mean let, we, let's not also think that it's going to happen so easily or quickly so uh, if we feel that this is something that's very critical i feel as an outcome of this meeting we should have a follow up meeting uh, to see that you know what is it that all of us can do and i'm really particularly also interested to get rajesh's view on this because yes, rajesh exactly is from, that's he is from yes. the community he is from indapur he has come into this he has developed a specialized technique and how does he view this whole uh, issue rajesh we'd really like to hear from you Uh, Mira, sorry. Before Rajesh just goes on, yeah. uh, starts with him. Uh, there's also Shravani, and while Seva was mentioning about uh, Supri, uh, yeah. Shravani works with uh, Supri. I, I believe uh, you know later on we can actually have her yes, as well. Yes, she did uh, actually had a chat with her, but I think she's left the call now. She doesn't seem oh, to. Oh, okay, okay. So I we, but I think you. we need to do a series of talks on this. Sure. I mean, this is just yeah, we just the uh, beginning of uh, I think a very important topic. मैं यहाँ दो तरीके से देख रहा हूँ एक जो रोहन जी ने जो पूरी लीगलिटी यहाँ जो बताई है वो कॉपीराइट के बारे में है या पेटेंट के बारे में है जियोलॉजिकल आइडेंटिकेशन के बारे में है तो ये एक अभी का करंट सिनारियो है और ये करंट सिनारियो की तरफ हमें क्यों जाना पड़ रहा है ये अगर हम लोग फंडामेंटल क्वेश्चन की तरफ जाते हैं तो क्राफ्ट इज बींग अ पार्ट ऑफ अवर कल्चर फॉर मेनी इयर्स जैसे मैंने पॉट्री के बारे में बताया चौदह हजार साल से हम लोग पॉट्री बनाते आ रहे न्योलिथिक पीरियड से जब से हम लोगों ने खेती करना शुरुआत किया तब से हम लोग पॉट्री बनाते आ रहे आ रहे है अलग अलग जो क्राफ्ट है वो भी कम्युनिटी हेल्पिंग की तरफ से इवॉल्व हुई है और इट वॉज द पार्ट ऑफ कम्युनिटी नीड्स तो वो समाज के लिए अलग अलग जगह पे वो होनी चाहिए थी और अभी आज वही क्राफ्ट अगर कमोडिटी बन जाती है देन दैट इकोनॉमिक पार्ट विल बी देयर और जहां इकोनॉमी आ जाती है वहां बहुत सारी माल प्रैक्टिसेस फॉल्स प्रैक्टिसेस और जो क्राफ्ट वॉश जो बहुत अच्छा शब्द यहाँ को किया गया है वो होने की संभावना है आ, अगेन देर आर टू सेक्टर्स वन इज कम्युनिटी सेक्टर जहां के जो राइट है वो अनस्कैटर्ड एंड थोड़े से अनऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर पे रहेंगे तो उनको प्रोटेक्ट करना और उसको आगे लेके जाना हमारी कम्युनिटी के हिसाब से वो हमारी ही रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है बिकॉज वी आर पार्ट ऑफ द कम्युनिटी सेकेंड इज अ पर्सनल जो स्टूडियो पॉटरी वाली जो चीज है वहां हमें अलग तरीके का प्रिविलेज मिलेगा जो डिजाइनर वाली जो चीज है अगर हम लोग कॉन्टेम्पररी डिजाइन में अगर हम लोग काम कर रहे हैं तो वी विल कीप मेकिंग न्यू डिजाइन विदाउट फियरिंग ऑफ कॉपिंग अवर डिजाइन क्योंकि अगर आपका डिजाइन कॉपी हो रहा है देन इट इज अ गुड डिजाइन वो कॉपी तो होने वाला है और कॉपी एग्जैक्टली नहीं हो सकता जैसे सुरक्षिना मैम ने कहा है कि हमारा जो मटेरियल है हमारी जो क्राफ्ट स्किल है वो सेम टू सेम कॉपी नहीं हो सकती उसके बहुत सारे वर्जन जरूर बन जाएंगे और उसमें एक मैं एनेकडोटल थोड़ी बात कहना चाहूंगा कि एक एग्जीबिशन में हमारे प्रोडक्ट हम लोगों ने डिस्प्ले किए थे पूना में जो एक भिंडड़ी जैसा एक एग्जीबिशन होता है वहां और वहां एक पॉटर लेडी फ्रॉम सातारा शी विजिटेड और स्टॉल और वो पहले भी यहाँ आकार में आके गई थी ऑब्वियसली मैंने उन, उनको पहचाना नहीं और उसके बाद में उन्होंने जो हम लोग एक जो वाटर कंटेनर बनाते हैं उसको हाथ में लेके हमें बताया कि 
मतलब आप ये सिक्स हंड्रेड रुपीज में बेचते हो इसकी वजह से हमें थ्री हंड्रेड रुपीज मिलना चालू हो गया अदरवाइज हमें हंड्रेड से पर ज्यादा पैसा मिलता नहीं था सो थैंक यू वेरी मच ऐसा उन्होंने उनकी जो कुछ लैंग्वेज थी उसके बारे में बताया तो ये एक अलग ही एहसास अलग ही एक्सपीरियंस था तो हर क्राफ्ट के लिए हर चीज के लिए जो डिजाइनर पर्सनल प्रोडक्ट रहेगा उसके एक उसके लिए एक अलग निश जरूर रहेगी और आ, मैं खुद ये बहुत सारी आइडियाज है और जो अंडरस्टैंडिंग है मटीरियल के बारे में जो अंडरस्टैंडिंग है आ, ये अंडरस्टैंडिंग को पर्सनल नहीं मानता ये आई सी दिस एज अ कम्युनिटी नॉलेज ये हम लोगों ने कहा से एडोप्ट कर लिया है जैसे इसकी जो लेगेसी है फोर्टीन थाउजेंड ईयर्स की जो लेगेसी है वो बहुत सारे लोगों ने कुछ ना कुछ उसमें एक्सपेरिमेंट करने के बाद में यहाँ तक पहुंचा ही है इट इट इज वेरी ट्रू इन ईच एंड एवरी टेक्निकल इवोल्यूशन ऑल्सो तो इसको हम लोग कैसे देखते हैं वो ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट है बहुत सारे आइडियाज है बहुत सारे कॉन्सेप्शलाइजेशन है और बहुत सारे एक्सपीरियंट एक्सपेरिमेंट जो है इनिशियल स्टेज पे हम लोग बहुत इनोवेटिव रहते हैं उसमें कुछ प्रोडक्ट बन जाते हैं कुछ इनोवेटिव आइडियाज और डिजाइन बन जाते हैं और उसके बाद में शुरुआत होती है कमर्शियल्स की ये यूनिट सस्टेन करने के लिए जो कमर्शियल्स होने होते हैं उस, उसके बारे में हमारी जर्नी चालू हो जाती है एंड देन कम्स की ये सब जो कॉपी होना है या कॉपी होने की संभावना है वो इनसिक्योरिटी बन जाती है तो ये सब प्रोसेस मेरे बारे में भी हुई है मैं आई विल शेयर माय पर्सनल एक्सपीरियंस मुझे मुझे ज्यादा ये आर्ट कम्युनिटी और क्राफ्ट कम्युनिटी के बारे में ज्यादा मालूम नहीं है फिर भी ये पर्सनल एक्सपीरियंस है और उसके बाद में जब भी हम लोगों ने ये अप्रोच मैंने ले लिया कि अरे नहीं ये ये जो सारी चीजें है वो कहीं से तो मैंने सीखी है और आई एम आई एम अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस कम्युनिटी तो ये सबके लिए ओपन है सो दैट इज वेर दैट टर्म इज देयर हम लोग कॉपी राइट वाले नहीं है कॉपी लेफ्ट वाले हैं उल्टा सी निकाल के रखते हैं तो यहाँ स्टूडियो में कोई भी वेलकम है कौन सी भी प्रोसेस यहाँ देख सकते हैं अडॉप्ट कर सकते हैं डिजिटल डॉक्यूमेंट कर सकते हैं वो लेके जा सकते हैं अभी करंट सिनारियों में ये जो चर्चा बन रही है तो उसमें मुझे भी थोड़ा सा ये महसूस होने लगा कि इसका रेलेवेंस कितने देर तक बचा रहेगा क्यों ये ये ओपन अटेम्प्ट लेना चाहिए या नहीं है और दूसरी चीज है ये जो मीडियम है जो पॉटरी का जो मीडियम है इट इज वेरी रीजन स्पेसिफिक वेरी रॉ मटीरियल स्पेसिफिक और वेरी क्राफ्ट स्पेसिफिक स्पेसिफिक मटीरियल तो कहीं भी आप जाओ और ये डिजाइन कॉपी करने की कोशिश करो तो वहां की मिट्टी वहां का एनवायरमेंट फॉर दैट मैटर वहां की आपकी फर्नेस विल डिसाइड द यूनिकनेस ऑफ दैट प्रोडक्ट तो ये लिबर्टी मुझे मेरे क्राफ्ट uh, के प्रैक्टिस uh, में मिल सकती है बट आई एम ओपन टू एनी आइडियाज मैं कम्युनिटी कम्युनिटीज के साथ में काम कर रहा हूँ अलग अलग प्रोजेक्ट पे काम कर रहा हूँ एक जो प्रोजेक्ट है वो पॉटरी क्लस्टर का डेवलपमेंट का भी प्रोजेक्ट है और वहां हम लोगों ने एक ये भी कॉन्सेप्ट अडॉप्ट कर लिए या हाइब्रिडाइजेशन संकर करना है अगर कहीं एक क्राफ्ट कम्युनिटी है वहां वर्किंग डिसिप्लिन है और कहीं एक यूनिक क्राफ्ट स्किल है जो ओवर द पीरियड वैनिश हो जा रहा है तो दोनों को मिला के हम हमें आगे लेके जाना चाहिए और एक वर्टिकल ग्रोथ की वजह बजा है हम लोग अगर ऑरिजोंटली जाते हैं तो वो ज्यादा अच्छा रहेगा हम्म तो ये ये थोड़ा लुकआउट इस इसमें है दूसरी बात है जो लोकल मटेरियल का इनकॉर्पोरेशन जो चीज है वो दो तीन लेवल्स पे बहुत ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट रहेगा अगर कोई भी लोकल चीज आप इनकॉर्पोरेट आपके क्राफ्ट में करते हो और वो बेचने के लिए लोकली कुछ आपकी सुविधा हो जाती है तो इट विल क्रिएट वेरी लेस एनवायरमेंटल इम्पैक्ट मतलब जो कार्बन फुटप्रिंट की बात अगर हम लोग करते हैं तो यहाँ एमेजोन का या फिर फ्लिपकार्ट का या भी फिर कौन सी भी लॉजिस्टिक कंपनी का सहारा लेके हम लोग जब भी मटेरियल यहाँ से वहां भेज देते तो बहुत सारा फायदा तो ओपेक कंपनी और तेल कंपनी का ही होने वाला है तो माय पॉइंट इज कि ये क्राफ्ट का जो ट्रांजिशन हो रहा है 
जो कम्युनिटी uh, सर्विस uh, से लेके कमोडिटी तक जो हो रहा है तो हमारे क्राफ्ट पर्सन हमारी क्राफ्ट कम्युनिटी ये अडॉप्ट करने के लिए तो थोड़ा बहुत स्पीड ब्रेकर्स उसमें आने ही वाले हैं और वहाँ क्राफ्ट डिग्निटी और रोहन सर जैसे जो एंटिटीज है वो उनको हेल्प जरूर कर सकते हैं बट दिस इज माई लुक आउट ऑफ द कॉपी लिफ्ट थैंक यू थैंक यू राजेश जी दैट वॉज इट्स सो वंडरफुल की इतने डाइवर्स व्यूज हम इतने कम लोगों के बीच में हमारे इतने डाइवर्स व्यूज हैं एंड आई थिंक लॉट ऑफ पीपल आपको सुनने के बाद यू कैन सी द कमेंट्स इतने सारे हैं कि एवरीबॉडी फाइंड्स इट वेरी रिफ्रेशिंग एंड वेरी डिफरेंट वेरी लिबरेट कैन आई से समथिंग प्लीज यस यस See the government, like when somebody was uh, talking. Ah, I can't about see who that is. Farida, Advocate Farida. I am yes, there. Yes, Farida. Yes, Farida. What I was talking about is when we talk about yes. copying, uh, copying of an original geographically identified product which has got registration and everything. When you get that, you automatically get certain certified uh, certificates for it. and when your product bears yes. that mark that logo that tag that identification it could be leather it could be uh, kolhapuri chappal or it could be banarasi saree now an original banarasi saree would be anything from 8000 to 3000 and somebody spoke about banarasi sarees being bhai uh, surat mein bhi bana lete hai aur 1 2000 mein bhi bik jati hai पर उनके पास वो लेबल नहीं रहेगा वो साड़ी के ऊपर वो टैग नहीं रहेगा बनारसी साड़ी अभी दो दो हजार में चाइना भी बना के बेचती है इंडिया के अंदर ऑफकोर्स गवर्नमेंट है बनाने वाले बनाते हैं पर जो ओरिजिनल का मार्क होता है वो इट विल बी डिफरेंट दे विल हैव दो आइडेंटिफिकेशन सो दैट इज वन वेरी गुड वे फॉर अ पर्सन हु बाइंग दैट प्रोडक्ट नोज वॉट क्वालिटी इज बाइंग I think they managed to make the labels also. In that case, in that case, it's a very serious offense. And the other thing, for the But people are looking be for the best the bargain. If they make a fake label and attach it to the product, then it's a very serious offense for the company who's doing it, and the registered group can definitely sue them. I mean, definitely, if they are saying that it is a Banarsi and it is not, whether it is for two thousand rupees or it's for two lakh rupees, the thing is, it is a fake copy. It is a fake because it's not yes, made it in Banaras. It's not made in that way. And it's, it's one thing to say, yeah, and it's one thing to say that it, you know, there are always takers for the original perfect thing with the certification, but. Uh, the the original maker is always left feeling cheated and left feeling ki ye hamare naam se bech rahe yes maybe the person buying a 1000 rupee banarsi saree cannot afford that expensive banarsi saree and maybe it doesn't directly cut into the sale but they it is still valid to feel upset about it and say ki hamara design hamara skill hamara naam in logon ne liya hai okay coming to design since we are talking of sarees banarasi sarees are made in maybe five or six regions of up from what i have uh, known about it there are certain areas five or six uh, small towns make these banarasi sarees and there is a particular uh, design which they follow the three persian designs which are followed on the banarasi pallu now when china copies it they cannot take those designs those designs will be different from what is there actual in an actual banarasi sari in your product right. what what is there is standard quality will be different your the designing will be different they cannot copy the same design because they know it is copyrighted yeah but that's true maybe they can't take product, that but they can take the name and i mean they can cut in they can make make out like it is the same thing when it's clearly a fake like even you are saying it is so i think we need to wrap it. up because we are at 5:35 yeah. now yeah yeah bridge uh, has his hand up the conversation forward bridge ji has his hand bridge ji has his hand up bridge ji yes i think that's from earlier bridge ji 
नहीं नहीं मैं कुछ कहना चाहता हूँ हाँ जी हाँ जी जरूर सॉरी मैंने सोचा आपका पहले का क्वेश्चन है बोलिए ठीक है सो मेरे मन में और कुछ बातें हैं वैसे तो देखिए ये जो डेढ़ घंटे का सेशन है ये बात करने के लिए ऊंट के मुंह में जीरे के समान है इसमें जो बातें मन में है वो पूरी बातें हम रख ही नहीं पा रहे हैं ना हम लोग एक दूसरे से कोई प्रश्न कर पा रहे हैं यहाँ पर दो चीजें आती है कि एक तो है जो कि कॉर्पोरेट स्तर पर या नकली लोगों के तो उत्पादों के बारे में यहाँ पर हम एक बात करें कि हैंडलूम मार्क जो कि पिछले कई सालों से हमारे जीवन में है लेकिन जब हैंडलूम मार्क जैसी सरकारी तंत्र ही अगर गलत प्रोडक्ट पर पावर के प्रोडक्ट पर जब हैंडलूम मार्क लगता है तो वहां पर हम किसको दोष देंगे दूसरी चीज जब हम जाते हैं इस तरफ की आज जितने कोविड के बाद में जिस तरीके से जिस तेजी से ऑनलाइन प्रोडक्ट बेचने के जो तरीके आए और उन ऑनलाइन प्रोडक्ट बेचने के तरीकों में जो असली कीवर्ड का इस्तेमाल करके नकली प्रोडक्ट को बेचा जाता है इसकी वजह से अनेकों अनेक असली प्रोडक्ट बनना ही बंद हो गए जिसमें एक एग्जाम्पल मैं दे सकता हूं कि जयपुर क्षेत्र में मीता जी आप खूब अच्छे से परिचित हैं जयपुर क्षेत्र में कॉटन की साड़ी पूरी दुनिया भर में प्रचलित है आज जयपुर क्षेत्र में कॉटन की साड़ी मलमल की साड़ी बनना ही बंद हो गई है क्योंकि उसका प्रतिरूप बनाकर उसको चार सौ रुपए साढ़े चार सौ रुपए पांच सौ रुपए में उसको एक फेक प्रोडक्ट के रूप में असली कीवर्ड के साथ में बेचा जा रहा है तो बताइए कि अगर नकली घी असली घी के नाम से बेचा जा रहा है तो असली घी का आ, मतलब वो असली घी बनाने वाला कहां पर जाएगा हाँ बिल्कुल सही है तो डिजाइन की बात नहीं है वो मूल स्तर पे ही फेक है डिजाइन तो सेकेंडरी चीज है उसके बारे में बाद में बात करें इट्स अ रियली इंटरेस्टिंग कॉन्वर्सेशन आई विश हम इसको आगे ले जा सकते थे पर अब हम अभी हमें यहाँ पे ही बंद करना पड़ेगा एंड आई थिंक हमें ये दोबारा इसी टॉपिक पे जैसे किसी ने यहाँ पे सजेस्ट किया मे बी जो क्वेश्चन है सिर्फ इसका एक फॉलो अप सेशन लेट सी अगर हम कर सकते हैं भक्ति दैट वुड बी रियली एंड इफ रोहन इज ओपन एंड अवेलेबल दैट वुड बी रियली नाइस कि हम इस अब हमें कुछ बेसिक इंफॉर्मेशन है अब हम अपने क्वेश्चन लेके आए और उससे आगे बढ़े ठीक है जी ओके सो थैंक यू एवरीबडी थैंक यू टू द पैनलिस्ट थैंक यू सो मच रोहन फॉर गिविंग आर सो मच इंफॉर्मेशन एंड आंसरिंग आर क्वेश्चन सब पैनलिस्ट को भी बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया और सारे लोग जो आए और सुन रहे हैं और सवाल पूछ रहे अपना इनपुट दे रहे हैं इट्स बीन अ रियली इंटरेस्टिंग टेक्निकल सेशंस कैन बी वेरी बोरिंग बट दिस वाज एनीथिंग बट वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग थैंक यू सो मच आई एम कमिंग टू इन द कोर्ट यस यू आर वेलकम यू आर ऑल ऑल आर वेलकम आई थिंक वी शुड डू द नेक्स्ट सेशन देयर सेड इट्स ओनली 125 किलोमीटर फ्रॉम पुणे यू विल सी अस सून यस एग्जैक्टली एग्जैक्टली इट्स अ थ्री ऑल मीता आई वुड सजेस्ट लेट्स डू अ सेशन एट वन ऑफ दीस प्लेसेस That will be more interesting. Yes, you're, you're welcome. Welcome to Indapur. I have a Indapur, Pune. Jaha pe aaja, aaja. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,